One of the greatest disciplines of the spiritual life is to learn to trust God in times of difficulty. God is never late with his solutions, but that also means he's never in a hurry. He knows exactly when to step in and show his favor. Today, thank him for his perfect timing in your life and trust him for what he is yet to do in your life. In the meantime, be firm in your convictions and hold to your life of obedience. Good morning, Mission Bell. Today is August 23rd, and we have three birthdays coming up this week. Debbie Cheney's birthday is tomorrow, August 24th. Dixie Bridgewater is the next day, the Tuesday, the 25th. And Darwin Wannenberg's is Wednesday, the 26th. So we have Debbie, Dixie, and Darwin, a three-day week. Happy birthday to all three of you. Our food pantry is open the first and third Sunday mornings from 8 until 9.30. The food kitchen is open every Saturday from 9 to 11. Last week, D scored McDonald's Crescent Croissants and McDonald's Chicken Fingers. If you weren't there last Saturday, you missed out. If you need assistance with grocery buying or help in any way, call the church office at 602-978-2281. If you need pastoral care, please call Pastor Doug at 563-505-6387. In July, our food pantry served 114 people, giving out 45 bags. Those needing prayers this week include Boyd Arnold, who continues at Memory Care. Dean Bowerman, Lauren Heidbreder's uncle, is doing better, but still not out of the woods. Susan Garrity reports that Catherine Bruce and Cheryl Dielman, Dielman, her sister, sisters, are still under physician's care. The Buchanan family needs to be continued in our prayers. Jean was a very best buddy of Larry Rogers and family. He was tragically killed a week ago in a wrong way driving accident where he was hit by an oncoming racer. Um, let me see, Minnie Daniels has passed away. She had a stroke, we reported that I believe last week, and she, Lauren, Clarence took her to the hospital, they admitted her, and we report that she never recovered. Rachel Daniels continues to, in, to do better with chemotherapy. Ed Fitzgerald has healed and can be removed from our list. Mike Ford, Diane and Bob Mason's nephew, has completed his first series of radiation and chemo and will have a scan in two weeks before, to, before starting the second and stronger series. On the 19th, Wednesday, they re, uh, Bob and Diane received a surprise phone call from Mike. He sounded good and in good spirits, and he thanks everyone for their prayers. He was at work, which is good. He can't drive yet because of his seizures. Bob and Diane Mason ask us to please continue to pray for Mike and his family. Hunter Heidbreder, prayers and praise. He had his most recent ultrasound to see if the cyst on his brain had grown larger and the physicians were delighted to find that it had not. Kent Klein is doing well and will be removed from our prayer list soon. Prayers and praise. The Mickey Pina family continues in our prayers. Um, as you remember, Mickey worked at ASU so that her daughter could get a reduction in ASU um, tuition. 
We continue prayers for the family. Kathy Pilling, we have no new information about Kathy, but her faith is strong and she should be recovering, we hope. Continue prayers for the Pilling family. Kalani Soland had problems with the first leg that she had surgery on. There was a broken femur and they're working to repair that. Joe and Myrna Aiello, Aiello, Aiello. <laughs> continue in the hospital. Our prayers continue for Joe. Myrna has been removed, has left the hospital. Michael and Kayla Beard, Ann Brock's granddaughter and husband, also Star Lynn's daughter and husband, are still on the mend but doing well. No news on Jeannie Hobart and Bobby Smith continues to need prayer for complications. Our prayers for today, our prayer for healing for today, sorry. Dear Lord, it is our will to surrender to you everything that we are and everything that we are striving to be. We open the deepest recesses of our hearts and invite your Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. We offer you our lives, hearts, minds, bodies, souls, and spirit. We surrender to you our past, present, and future problems. Amen. Greetings from Pastor Doug. Paul says to the church in Rome, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. I'm like a broken record. Again and again I say to you, we are all sinners saved by God's mercy and grace. God knows we have fallen, gotten up, and will fall again. He is not fickle or naive. He knows we are sinners and that he will need to throw out the lifeline again and again. God also knows that every so often we will ignore the lifeline and try to make it back to solid ground on our own volition. He sees us every time we get in over our heads. He knows when we have fallen and need a helping hand. Sometimes it comes from a friend, and sometimes it is mysteriously offered from an unknown source, and it often comes to us when we think there is no way out of our situation. Although God didn't make us stupid, he knows our egos will sometimes get the best of us. Humbly, we have to seek a higher power. His gifts and calling are irrevocable. I once worked with a man who had a defiant son. He had tried time and time again to help the son get out of tight jams and find a better way. In desperation, he declared to me, I'm done with him. He hasn't got the sense God gave to a gnat. He's on his own. Was the father trying too hard? Was the son not trying hard enough? The old saying that you can't save someone who doesn't want to be saved comes to mind. Sometimes we humans have to get trapped in a boxed canyon with no way out. We have to exhaust our earthly ability and come to the conclusion that we have to ask the Father for help. What, that's right. We have to admit our limitations and take the initiative to ask for help. It would seem that the world is at the, that place with this COVID-19 pandemic. We don't have answers. If a politician or neighbor declares that they have all the answers and then they live in fairyland, they do not realize they are trapped in the boxed canyon and have to ask for help. As for me and my house, we know we need help. We have to trust in the scientists and medical professionals. We need to learn and listen. God is saying to us, hey, 
My gifts and your calling are irrevocable. I will be with you until the end of time. Trust in me. So for the meanwhile, we trust in God and know that he will never desert us. Maybe he's waiting for us to ask, to trust, to obey. The upper rooms have arrived at the church. Please stop by and pick one up when you are out and about. This is a time to pray your personal prayers. Pray for those who are on your hearts. Pray for your neighbors, for those who you don't even know. Pray for the people who stand on the streets and are in need. Pray for everyone. Remember to pray for those in law enforcement and safety emergency. We have Christopher Henriksen, Joan Klein's nephew, who is a law enforcement officer in Miller, South Dakota. Okay. And Sandy and Jim Mullins, Lee and Marilyn Mullins' son and wife. We have John Pilling, who is a longtime member of our church. He trains his dog, if you recall, at the talent show, his dog sang. And we have Brian and Adrian Van Lu Berman, who are Natalie McLean's um, grandchildren. In the military, we have Stephen Bailey, Brandon Bittler, Michael Dixon, Nicholas Nelson, Beggs Nelson's grandson, who has been probably the most recent attendee, Ian Powell, and Tiffany Strever, who is, as Gary Seba says, the colonel. He says he's never hugged a colonel before. <laughs> Our churches for the month of August are Mountain View, UMC in Cottonwood, New Church Start in Yuma, New Song, United Methodist Church in Surprise, and Nuevo Pacto in Phoenix. Join us for today's prayer. Lord, heighten our desire to listen and obey. We are all in this together. Like the songs say, we are one in the spirit, or one bread, one body. Help us to trust in one another through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Please take a moment of silence and pray for those who are on your hearts.
The Epistle of Paul to the Church in Rome, Romans 11, 29 to 32. All Israel will be saved. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to them, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all his to all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. For our offering today, we give God the praise for your faithful giving. Your generosity makes it possible for Mission Bell Church to continue its ministries and outreach efforts. Give as you are able and know that it is not the size of your gift, but the love behind the gift that blesses the gift, the giver, and the work of Mission Bell United Methodist Church. You can give through the mail, drop off your gift in the locked mailbox near the office, online, or by direct withdrawal through your bank. The Gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28, the Canaanite woman's faith. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, have mercy, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. 
My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is Sunday, um, the 23rd of August. Uh, I'm in my office uh, recording this. We're going to be taking it. It's a 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We're going to be taking our message from Romans 11, 29 through 32, Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Uh, both of them are uh, preachable uh, messages. Uh, I hope you really enjoy this. But we're going to be taking it from, from uh, Paul's letter to the church in Rome, where he talks about an irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust. Now here's a little prescript message uh, for those of you watching on the Facebook posting. Since I have a tendency to be wordy and I have difficulty posting some of my longer messages, I'm going to kind of breeze through this thing uh, a little faster. Uh, if you miss something in the message, you can always go back and watch it again. Uh, but today's message is primarily taken from Paul's epistle to the church in Rome. Uh, he's teaching us about, uh, about what we should take to heart, what's important in, in God's message. So um, he says to us, if, you, if your heart is with Christ, then God's love is in you. God's love is for all of his children. It's eternal, everlasting. Paul says in, in the epistle, he says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. They're not revocable. Although I'll focus on Paul's epistle, I must say that uh, the reading from Matthew is a beautiful example of that everlasting love of God, the compassion of Christ. There's a, a long history of, of adversarial relations between the Canaanites, which are indigenous tribes to the area, and the Israelites. Uh, God, God's chosen people, they believe. And so when they're talking about the Canaanites, they're talking about the undesirables. The Israelites proclaimed sovereignty to Yahweh. The Canaanites were a racially diverse group, uh, looked down on by the, Can by the Isra Israelites, uh, sometimes referred to as dogs. Uh, for the moment, let's backtrack, though, to Jesus' uh, trip to uh, Tyre and Sidon. Now, on this particular trip, he runs into a woman, and the woman's daughter is possessed by a demon. And she approaches Jesus and with a request. She wants a healing for her daughter. And, and the Canaanite woman cries out to Jesus, Have mercy, O son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Well, Jesus didn't immediately respond. Uh, his disciples grew agitated and aggravated by the Canaanite woman because she was drawing unwelcome attention to them. Uh, they weren't really interested in hearing from her. So, first, the woman didn't speak to unknown men. We know that. Women do not speak to unknown men, and certainly not a Canaanite woman to a Jewish man. But notice that Jesus doesn't follow any of the customs or the mores uh, of, of the Jewish culture. 
there is an exchange between Jesus and the woman. Uh, Jesus says to her, I, I, I was sent for the lost sheep of Israel. And she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. And Jesus says to her, I cannot take the bread from the children of the house of Israel. And then the woman uses uh, some of the Canaanite uh, feelings about being disrespected. And she says to him, Surely, Master, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs from the Master's table. That seemed to trip Jesus' go-to button. Jesus, filled with compassion, says to the woman, Great is your faith, it will be done as you desire. And the daughter was instantly healed. The Gospel is a prime example of the inclusiveness of, of God's love and care for his creation. It's an example of, of knowing the power of God and seeking his healing grace, which is exactly what the women did. The life and teachings of Christ are the foundation upon which Paul built his ministry to the Greco-Roman cities and villages. The residents of these towns and cities were generally Gentiles, uh, looked down upon by the Jews. Paul saw them as God's children. In this epistle to the church in Rome, Paul offers an assurance for the gifts and the grace, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, even to Gentile converts, even to Gentile converts. God, God's ways are not our ways so to speak. For although we would give up, God doesn't give up. He never gives up. I say that knowing that the, um, the unpardonable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit uh, or attributing the work of the Spirit uh, to the work of the devil. Then I always bear that in mind because that is the unpardonable sin. Well, back to Paul. Paul said to the church in Rome, God's gifts and callings are irrevocable. He was saying, God knows you will fall, you will fail to follow the teachings of Christ. But he reassured them, God will not give up on you. God sees us. He knows each of us intimately. Yes, we've fallen. Yes, we'll get up. And yes, we'll fall and get up again. God is not naive. He knows he will need to throw out the lifeline to us, not once, not twice, multiple times. God also knows that every so often our ego gets the best of us. We think we can do it on our own. He knows that every time we get in over our heads, he sees it. He, he, he sees us when we need a helping hand. He He's like a parent. He grieves when his children, their egos get in the way of asking for help. His gift of free will allows us to go it on our own or to ask for help. His help comes when we accept our limited mortality, our, our limited ability to, to do what's right, to, to solve every one of our problems. We have to ask him for help. That's a part of that free will. You and I know God didn't make us stupid. He knows our egos and our sense of self-reliance sometimes get the best of us. He knows that. He taught humility through Christ. He taught us that we should be humble, that we, we should seek his higher power. That, that's the teaching, but we don't always get that right. Paul offers assurance. Remember, God's gifts and his calling are irrevocable. I once met a man who had a defiant son. He had tried time and again to help his son do the right thing, uh, to follow the right path. He offered the son his assistance in getting out of tight jams or difficult situations. His son continuously refused the father's advice. He didn't want his help. In desperation, the father declared to me, I'm done with him. He hasn't got the good sense that God gave a gnat. He's on his own. I'm through. I'm over. Uncle Virgil might ask, was the father trying too hard? 
Was the son not trying hard enough? Was there bad blood between the son and the father? Was the father being too judgmental? Was the son feeling unloved? Had either of them truly learned about forgiveness? We don't know. But the old saying that you can't save someone who doesn't want to be saved comes to mind. And it applies both to the father and to the son. To both of them. Sometimes we humans have to get trapped in a box canyon with no way out. The enemy behind us, no exit. We have to exhaust all our earthly ability and come to the conclusion that we don't have the answers. We have to ask for help. God, the Father's help. That's right. We have to admit our limitations and take the initiative to ask God for his help. Uncle Virgil would say, first you consider your abilities and options. If you can with God's help, then you move forward. If you can't, then it's time to pray. Time to let go. Time to pray. As a side note, I'm reminded that both the pandemic and the quest for equal rights are issues that we have to take to God. God would love to address them in our society and in our lives. Remember, Paul was a slow learner. You remember his story. Paul knew that from whence his knowledge came. He was knocked on his rear, blinded for three days, while the Savior went to work on his ego. It took a radical love to help Paul understand that his training and his behavior were ungodlike. Paul had to learn that he was a sinner saved by grace. When Paul's passion turned from being against Christ to being for Christ, God began a work in Paul. Paul's passionate nature became God's workstation. So Paul knew that God sees our abilities and our needs. Paul knew that we need to be filled with God's desires. Paul knew the gifts of the Holy Spirit were available to us and Paul knew that once God gets our attention, he plants in us an irrevocable trust. When we try to honor God with our, our lives and our abilities, his gifts and his graces are amazing. His gifts and his graces are amazing. We, we stand in awe of him. But even when we fail, we need to remember, God's calling and gifts are irrevocable. I'm pretty sure that when I had read those words early in my life or early in my ministry, I didn't understand the hugeness of the, process, of the promise. I didn't understand the, the hugeness of what God was saying. God's calling and gifts are irrevocable. The word ir irrevocable, however, becomes, uh, once you have read it, understand what the word really means, it kind of sticks in your head. With God as a guide, a number of years ago, Ethel and I decided to take charge and protect our earthly assets. We wanted to plan for the good use of God's gifts, even when we were gone. We heard about a thing called an irrevocable trust. There's the word again, irrevocable. An irrevocable trust uh, legally protects you uh, and what you've acquired. In our case, the gifts from God. The trust assigns the future use of those assets to your family or an organization to whom you endow them. Ethel and I wanted to be sure that our family, who knows us and knows our desires, rather than the government, decides the best use of our assets in carrying out our work. That's where we went with the irrevocable trust. God first, his kingdom, and then the family. They know that. We want to know that what we have been given by God and that which we have worked to preserve will be held in a trust and cared for by our sons. Like I said, rather than left in the hands of the government. 
But God's irrevocable trust is much greater than the financial document that we signed. His irrevocable trust is the promise of the call for our hearts and the gifts that he gives us that are everlasting. In God's terms, endowing us with his calling and his gifts, what do they do? They, they, they carry us forward. They're what motivate us. They're what become our passion and our future interests. Paul tells the church in Rome that God has placed their well-being in his irrevocable trust. God's calling and Christ's teachings and salvation and the gift of the Spirit are irrevocable. What God has given, he will not take away. Can you imagine how disappointed, though, God is when we ignore his teachings? When we decide that we know the best way forward, either as individuals or as a country, do you, can you imagine how disappointed he is when we do not demonstrate the unconditional love of Jesus Christ? As I recall, Christ taught a whole new way of dealing with humanity that the Jews had never considered. He taught and I, I, and I paused for the moment because I want to make sure you understand. He taught that we accept one another, regardless of color, regardless of race, regardless of background. We accept one another. Remember the healing of the daughter of the Canaanite woman? Not a Jew, not an Israelite. She was from a different background altogether. Christ instructs us to love one another as he has loved us, that unconditional love. When Christ instructs his disciples on how to treat adversaries, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. The same teaching applies today. Conflict generally begets conflict. God through Christ taught true forgiveness. God wants his children to know true love, true grace, true mercy. God's call is forever, everlasting to everlasting. God's gifts are so bountiful. When we use his gifts, we can accomplish the unimaginable. Human rights issues resolved. The pandemic resolved. Conflict between nations resolved. These are the things that God wants for his children. United with God and living in the compassion of Christ, no task is insurmountable, no goal is too big, and no relationship is unsalvageable. And the Father and the Son who disagreed, if they turn their hearts to Christ, there may be forgiveness. Amen and Amen.
Our apostolic blessing for today. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please pray for those who are on your hearts. Pray for those who are distanced from you. Never let a moment go by that you do not praise God for family, friends, and your faith community.